I went through a total of 42 placements from the time I was 9 to the time I was 18. Voters in Arizona have officially passed the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act, also known as the AMMA law. They were absolutely not skulking around the street corner like um, some backstreet dealer. The area that they were in is such a huge gray area of the law. I'm looking at 15 very serious felonies. I'm assuming it's going to go real, real bad. haters made us famous or you know they hated us and did this awful stuff to our family we're still here they're still good after bad he's a survivor Chris has always been a survivor what I learned about him he won't give up Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, welcome to War Stories. Uh, it's a new segment. Uh, we talk about uh, experiences in prison and uh, st shining light on uh, people that have been in prison, incarcerated, and, um, and have done something positive. Uh, today we got a good friend of mine. Uh, his name's Chris Martin. Um, known him for a lot of years and I'm so excited to have him on. Um, now Chris, uh, Man, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on, man. Thank, while, huh? thank you for coming out. Yeah, it's been been a Long minute. Road. Long <laughs> road, right? And now let's get into it. We got got a don't got much time. You got such an amazing story. Um, give us a little brief summary sure. of uh, your journey, bro. Um, well, uh, let's go back. 2007, diagnosed with Crohn's. 2010, medically legal here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. My wife and I became caregivers. We started to grow cannabis for other people. Uh, we produced a product called Zonka, a chocolate bar and some RSO, FICO stuff, mm -hmm. uh, mainly for cancer patients. Um, there were no dispensaries, so we did the collective, the Compassion Club, those kinds of things. Yeah. Two years in, got rated 2012, uh, looking at life, 127 years, 15 felonies, wife charged with 11, three and a half year trial. Um, we beat the case. Um, I only got two years, so in my eyes, that's a win. Um, um, since okay. then, we founded a nonprofit. We have launched our documentary. We've launched two books, a third to be um, launched by the end of this year. We've started uh, Hemful Farms, which is now 10 years old. Wow. Uh, the cafe is looking at a new location here shortly. I mean, nice. you name it. The most important to us, though, I think, is the nonprofit. Uh, ZonkaMiles.World is something that I felt like I got a second life, a, chan a second chance at life, so I give back to the people who are still locked up for pot. Yeah, and, and that's something I've always respected about you. You know, prior prior to, I mean, you've been doing this for years, and and it's you know, it's just something that your heart, it's it's in the right place. Whether it's it's trying to help people with uh, their medicine Absolutely. or or help people that are, that are in prison, it well, just we were caregivers first. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we got raided and went to prison as people who were helping. 
Not okay. people chasing the dollar, not people trying to rip other people off, but people that were trying to build a community. Exactly. And you and you guys had two licenses to grow, right? We were caregivers. So yeah. back then there were no dispensary licenses yet. Mm, they were yeah. still fighting over which corporation was going to steal them all. Yeah. So we were caregivers. We mm -hmm. were allowed to have a certain number of patients with a certain number of plants. And uh, we tried to utilize that to help people. I think the problem was is they realized they weren't getting their tax dollar. And they yeah. showed us who boss, who, who was boss. Exactly. Chris, I've seen your, uh, I've seen it several times, your documentary. Thank I've you. seen it again last you. night. You almost made me cry again, man. <laughs> I've seen it about, about four times and I still. Well, don't um, feel bad, man, because I still have yet to watch it all the way through. I can, I, 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 I it's believe It's a heavy it. story. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a heavy very story. heavy Thank you for story. Watching. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. It's, it's amazing. Um, one thing that stood out to me is, uh, I mean, tons of things, you know, I mean, just your, your whole journey, you know, everything about it. Um, but tell people, how many foster homes were you in between the age of, of nine and, 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 13, and, yeah. uh, and, and 18? Yeah, I was in upwards of uh, 30 to the early 40s, different placements wow. from the time I was nine till I was 18. And a lot of that was because the placements don't aren't are very solid mm -hmm. the, even back then you know i'd say even more so back then even though the problem now is there's two thousand more kids in our kansas system and there's half the placements so uh, to go through that many placements you know your your eight high schools um n no stability no foundation um you really don't know what's left or right uh, i tried to hang on to sports as being my you know, the one part of, of life that wasn't going to give out on me and then injuries happen. Mm -hmm. So you kind of question why you're even around. And my lucky for me, uh, I got picked up by a college baseball team in Arizona. So uh -huh. that's how I got here. I, yeah. I didn't know anything about Yavapai or Prescott or yeah. any of the area. I just got recruited to come try out for the team. Uh, yeah, I walked yeah. on, I threw eight pitches and next thing you know, I'm on the team. But I still don't have mom, dad, money, a job, yeah. so I, rec I resort right back to slinging, to For selling sure. weed, yeah. to hustle, to get some money, and you know, I got busted doing that, and that's how I caught my first case. I, I had uh, some, luckily, I only got caught with the joint in the top drawer, but the 11 pounds in the drywall didn't uh -huh. get caught, yeah. but it was a warning shot. It was, For sure. You know, look, you're going to go do three years instead of ten. Yeah. Um, get your shit together, pretty much. So that's, that's what the idea was, was to um, make it through that, survive. I met my wife there in college, and, and for 20 years we were golden uh -huh. until I tried to make edibles, and it went south. Yeah, yeah. And one thing we're really trying to focus on this, um, you know, on this show is... is positive yeah. positive uh, people you're a positive influence on so Thank many you. people Thank including you. myself and i know you had a somebody that had a had a huge impact in in your in your life um tell us about that dave alvarado um dave. Uh, it's funny because my wife says that I'm so much like Dave, even more so than my own mom and dad. Uh -huh. And he's a short little Hispanic guy, like the, the, the coolest man in the world. Um, we don't look alike, obviously. <laughs> we, we go to father, you know, parent, teacher, uh -huh. and they, it was weird. We were like, are you <laughs> sure? Um, no, Dave was the guy that, um, he's a CASA worker, which means a court appointed special advocate. Okay. Volunteer. Wow. So he saw my case as a child and moving around to all these placements. And Dave was like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. Dave stepped in, wanted to, you know, change the path. And he, he did more than what was required by the state. This guy would come to my football games and he would write down every single play. Wow, the result of every yeah. play and then he would send it to colleges and try to get wow. me recruited so he was an angel he was really an angel the funny thing with dave we separated once i i came out here to play baseball when i was a teenager dave went on with his life he's a costume worker he's got other kids he has to go for help. sure we didn't see each other for 26 years Man. so when we filmed haters make me famous we had to go back to kansas to film it mm -hmm. my my production team had a private investigator find dave a very private uh, man uh it just so happens that Dave had worked for Russell Stover's for 12 years as a chocolate company, right? Wow, yeah. He was one of the guys that helped invent the cellophane on the heart for Valentine's. Oh, wow. Very humble guy. won't even tell you he did that. We found that in our search. Mm -hmm. Well, when we got back together to film, they filmed it on the documentary film, so it was part of the movie. 
um, that was real time. Uh, we were meeting for the first wow, time. Wow, really? Years. That's Absolutely. awesome. As we caught up with each other, and he realized I went to prison for chocolate, and I realized he worked for Russell Stover's, <laughs> I said, Dave, we're trying to go legal. Would you want to come down here and be my chef? Uh, I hired him for a wow. year. He came down. He taught us how to write SOPs. He taught us how to legitimize the chocolate side. So now we can go do licensing agreements nationally. I can take my SOP and hand it to a company. They pay me a royalty, wow. and we can produce it anywhere, all because of Dave, Damn. the same cost worker who told me, Stay away from pot. Pot's not gonna have a future. You wanna stay in school. And now, 26 years later, he was infusing my chocolate yeah. and learning how to do it. I mean, I, you can't make it up. The story totally yeah. went full circle and, and I love him. He's, he's like a dad to me. I, absolutely, and I, I know you ain't doing this on your own, uh, Andy. Oh. No, Andy, she, your, I'm just a guy brave is. enough to get in front of that thing right there. Um, <clears throat> my wife is the reason I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, we met when I was in college. Um, I stress, I was in college. <laughs> uh, we were at a college party, and I watched this beautiful redhead walk by that I definitely had never seen on cannabis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized it's because she was a sophomore in high school and shouldn't have been at our party. <laughs> so, you know, at that moment, obviously, we didn't date or we didn't have any type of relationship, but we, we had all the same circle of friends. For sure. Um, her friends hang out with my friends on the ball team. I met her family. I met her mom and dad. And we just became inseparable and the funny part was is we were just best friends we, mm -hmm. there was no dating there was no yeah. physical relationship not from the lack of trying yeah <laughs> I, I tried really hard uh, but i always told her that i know you're it i know you're the one mm. it might be now it might be 50 years from now but i know and look 22 years later we've been married 11 years um the best decision i made and i couldn't have survived prison or court or life without 22 years of my life. So. Absolutely. I remember you, when you were in prison, um, Andy would come into the shop and, and she would, she would, uh, yeah. you know, order shirts yeah. and uh, I mean, yeah, going. yeah, yeah. She, she was, she was behind it. I like to her, think of her as we have a, a saying in Spanish, uh, chiquito pero picoso. Uh, means uh, small but spicy, <laughs> and she's uh, yeah, she, she reminds me of that because uh, that yeah, she's true. it's funny, she's an awesome person. You mentioned that, and now while I'm out, you know, memories pop up on your Facebook of what was posted in the past, mm -hmm. and I see the post that this woman put up on uh -huh. Facebook in my defense while I was in prison with you know whatever problems we were facing mm -hmm. and that term fits her perfectly because <laughs> I, I, I mean, see spitball, it right? <laughs> Absolutely. She, she was ready to take on the world and honestly she did by herself I I gotta tell you you know prison I mean, yeah minus the politics and and some of the dope it, it's simple you follow mm -hmm. the rules you yeah. go to bed you wake up you do your deal mm -hmm. she had the hard job yeah, it's a lot harder out Absolutely. here Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, Chris, I, I we got a we covered a lot, but gotta keep going. Yeah, you guys, you guys need to see his documentary and and see all the stuff he has. There's we don't have enough time to cover all the things that he's yeah. involved in. But let's get it. Let's uh, talk about your convicted creations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you guys have ever seen or been been to our booth, uh, we have a cookbook, and this is the man that that uh, that did it. This is it. So. The cookbook, uh, just like everything else in life, was not only done by myself. Um, I had a really dear friend in prison. His name was Billy McMaster. We called him Irish. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the guys that was a good guy in there. Um, mm -hmm. Wasn't into the politics. He already done eight years. He was just trying to go home and be a dad. Mm -hmm. Got busted doing dope and, and was over it. Yeah. He was also the guy that, you know, because of my position in there, he was kind of my eyes when I wasn't looking. Uh -huh. He'd be the guy like, hey man, this dude over here is out of line. Let's go talk to him. You know, he's just, just a really good guy. The, the phone breaks and you're ready to rip it off the wall For because sure. you've waited so long to use it. But he'd be the guy going, hey, let's walk around the track. Uh -huh. let's take some laps and get your head right. You don't, For sure. You're going home in months. You know, it's just yeah. that guy. So we would eat, not go to the chow hall because obviously it's garbage. Yeah. And I would make recipes. I would. You know, the tamales, uh, the, the ice cream in the dryer. We, we would just come up with whatever creation we would come up with to feed our, our little crew. For and sure. And Billy's idea was, you know, write it down, get this thing on paper, see where it goes. Well, I did that, but I didn't take it serious because I was like, who in the hell wants to read what we eat? For sure, yeah, you know, yeah. I really didn't think it was a big deal. Oh, people love it. When Irish passed away in 18, he came home from prison. 
He wanted a, a motorcycle. He worked for me. I got him a down payment to buy a wow. bike, and he got ran over on it. Oh, March man. 5th, 2018. So I, if you look in front of the both books I wrote, I dedicated the proceeds to both of them to his daughter. He's got a 12-year-old girl. Just because he was the inspiration behind wow. making it happen. And I want to make sure that she's got something coming. And that was my way of doing it. So now we bring inmates onto the set that have come home. And we tell their story, we, we fellowship, we make these products and we talk about prison, we talk about not being there anymore and try for to sure. normalize it. And you know, my biggest plight for these women and men coming home is the re-entry. You for know how sure. hard that re-entry oh, is man, and stabilizing and you know, we really just try to help on that. And this is just our way of laughing off a really bad for deal. Sure. And to, for you guys to take it even a step farther into a, a food truck or a AF trailer, whatever, it's humbling. You know, it's For an honor, sure. that, not just to me, but the people we represent that are still sitting there right now. So, on, honor to you. I Thank appreciate you. what you do. I, you know, I, I, I think it's great. I, I, I'm, I'm just humbled that someone even took it that serious yeah thank you chris Absolutely. and man thank you for your time um like i said we we had a lot more to cover yeah. but we did our best yeah. um you guys thank you for watching uh this is his book he's he wrote um it's an awesome read uh haters make me famous that's Amazon his uh, that. his documentary as well I uh, appreciate you guys, uh, you know, stopping by for, for your time watching our show. And uh, thank you for, uh, for choosing War Stories. Hello, my name is David Adame, President and CEO of Chicanos por la Causa. Today, I would like to announce our brand new exciting partnership with Arizona Barrio Stories. Arizona Barrio Stories is a key part of our community and in line with what we believe in, restoring Chicano history and making sure that we continue to celebrate Mexican traditions, history, family, and culture. Arizona Barrio Stories will play an important role in bringing you important stories about Chicanos por la Causa and the founders who helped build Chicanos por la Causa, but also other key important stories about our Chicano community here in Arizona. We look forward to a wonderful partnership and thank you for your continued support.